That is the perfect story. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, that, I'm going to have a hard time topping that. Um, so quick question, who here has written for the public before on a blog, magazine, news, anything? Oh, excellent. Oh. Good. Who's uh, active on Twitter? Anybody? Great. Anybody been on Reddit? Great. Okay, excellent. Oh, you guys know what you're doing. Um, so um, that's great. I'm glad to hear that some of you are already engaging. Uh, it's fun. Uh, Twitter, so not to like completely contradict everything you said, but journalists sort of live on Twitter. And journalism Twitter and science Twitter are kind of the two best classes of Twitter. Mm. And they're hilarious. They're fun. They're outrageous. Um, it's, you know, if, if you're n not much on Twitter, uh, I encourage you to, to you know, to, to play around on it. It's a really good way to communicate with journalists and to get noticed by journalists. Um, so I'm all for it. And Reddit, um, if you ever have a paper coming out, uh, doing an Ask Me Anything on the Science Channel is a really good way to sort of to 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 reach a, a big audience and also to find out what sort of questions people have. So if if you're not if you're not familiar with this, and Ask Me Anything is you basically just contact the person who runs the Reddit Science Channel, who's a great guy, um, tell them you've got this coming out. You'd be willing to do an AMA, and then they'll set you up for a time, and then several hours before it's announced, or a few days before, and then people just ask questions on Reddit, and then you answer them in real time. And uh, it's it's very it's a very democratizing process. Um, a lot of people on Reddit are interested in science but don't know any actual scientists, and so this is a good way to kind of meet a new, a new audience and a new conservation-minded audience. Um, so, but specifically for the post, um, as I mentioned, you know, we've got this motto, democratize in darkness. We're very um, interested in exposing things. And what we really care about most of all is what we call accountability journalism, which is whose fault is it? You know, what went wrong? Whose fault is it? How can we fix it? Who needs to fix it? Um, those kinds of questions. So we also love you know, straight news stories, straight feature stories with charismatic megafauna and, uh, and penis snakes. Um, but that, that, that was that, but the, the angle of this also, you know, the, the ecological <coughs> destruction of this dam, you know, make the penis snake making that more relevant is the angle that would appeal most for the Washington Post. So that's something we really care about. Um, let's see. Uh, quick. Oh, just click down. There's the accountability story. Oh, okay, excellent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so like I say, whose fault is it? Who can fix it? And in, in part of the reason this works, um, you know, because it's our mission, um, but also because outrage is, um, is useful. Um, getting people mad about something is a, is a very good way to, to make a story uh, interesting to people and make people want to share the story. Um, and especially... You know, but, but outrage by itself is, is unsatisfying, is upsetting. Um, and so like the perfect story in keeping with the, the theme of this whole meeting is if there is some sort of solution, if there's some sort of hope, um, if there's some way to fix a problem that's been identified, or if, it's, you know, if the problem's been identified for a long time and there's a new way to fix it, those are, those are things that are very, um, a very good way to, to get attention for your, re for your work or for work that you care about. Uh, and so just one example is uh, we had a, a whole series of stories about the opioid epidemic, which has, I mean, it's, it's really just hard to overstate how horrible this is, how many people are dying of, of heroin overdoses, fentanyl overdoses. Um, like the numbers are, are just, from your perspective, just shooting up and have surpassed uh, deaths by gun, deaths by a car accident. Um, it's just this horrible public health tragedy. And so we had a series of investigations of, well, who, you know, people should have stopped this and didn't. And part of it is it looked like the DEA slowed down enforcement during, while the um, opioid epidemic was really bubbling up. So that's one issue. Um, and so in general, framing, uh, another tip. Um, so for, for the Post, generally, you know, people who, who wake up in the morning thinking, I want to read about conservation, um, they have a lot of places to go. And the Post isn't necessarily one. Um, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be the first thing you think about when you think I'm looking for environment, conservation, earth stories. Um, and yet we reach a huge audience. And so part of the way to do that is to, to find uh, some element of the story that's surprising, outrage, like I say, outrage is good. Um, if, and also if there's a travel history art angle, and this is something that Smithsonian's really good at too, and, and <coughs> National Geographic, is you know, if this story is happening someplace people ever go for vacation, that instantly means that you've got a, a larger potential audience. Um, if there's some historical angle that grabs people, and for us especially, is there a political angle? Um, and as I think everybody will say, the, you know, as we're all text people, we all care about words, um, but really, if you want to grab people, the video, the photos, the graphics are what do it more than anything. 
Um, so this is, you know, as I mentioned, charismatic. Well, this is a kind of a medium-sized fauna. Um, but we had a, a series of stories about the um, uh, fish and wildlife trying to save black-footed ferrets by using a drone to launch, to shoot out, like, basically Reese's pieces um, <laughs> that had been infused with a vaccine uh, against a, against a, a rodent plague um, to prevent the black-footed ferrets from getting it and also their prey species, um, the prairie dogs, from getting it. So cute, cute story. We had video. It, it did well. Um, and then uh, another thing that really matters for most journalists and especially for, for news journalists is um, we want to have an exclusive. So if you have a story that hasn't been covered and should be covered, um, that's a really good way to sell a story to, to journalists in general and especially to newspapers. And one thing to keep in mind, so I, I, I run the Health Science and Environment Desk, but there are other places in, in any major newspaper that also cover conservation, including education divisions. So look for education reporters, um, look for metro reporters in your area. Um, also opinion pieces. So I personally, I edit a lot of scientists um, and conservationists and, and doctors. We run a lot of first person stories. They tend to do really well. People like to hear first person stories. So if you want to write it yourself, you can, uh, or you can suggest that. Um, but also just let us know, you know, what's what's coming up and, and kind of keep in mind that there are lots of different ways to tell a story, even in one publication. Um, and if you're at an institution, um, as Rhett mentioned, do talk to your public information officers. They can really help get a message out, especially if you have uh, a new paper coming out or if, if you know, a new field season or, or something that that's, could be sort of newsworthy. And just one thing in general, um, notice, you know, read, you know, read lots of media and notice which reporters you respect, um, which ones get the story straight. And if there is one who's doing work that you really admire and, and trust, if you have a good story, come to them first and, uh, and tell them why that you're coming to them. And most, most of us, like all it, at the Post, everybody has their, bi underneath their byline, they have their email address. And reporters tend to be easy to find or ping them on Twitter. Um, and that's probably the best way to, to make a direct contact. His journalists, I used to be a scientist, now I'm a journalist. It's like the, it's very complementary worlds, um, complementary subcultures. So they're good people. They'll want to hear from you. Thanks.